The mitochondria are the power plants of our body cells. Mitochondrial disorders are disorders in which the body lacks the ability to effectively convert the food we ingest into energy to enable all of our body functions to take place. Mitochondrial disorders were first described in the late 1950s in patients who had been previously functioning normally who developed such symptoms as weakness and dementia. On tissue analyses, these patients were found to have bizarrely and abnormally structured mitochondria indicating that their batteries of their body cells were not functioning normally leading to their clinical symptoms. In the 1980s, some of the many genes involved in mitochondrial disorders were first described. Since that time, we have learned a considerable amount about mitochondrial disorders. And currently, the incidence is believed to be one in 5,000 to 8,000 individuals. In the early 1990s, the incidence was believed to be one in 50 to 100,000 individuals. So they are far more common than we anticipated even 20 years ago. By comparison, some of the more common genetic disorders that most of us have heard of and are familiar with include cystic fibrosis, which occur in one in 2,000 individuals. So that provides you with a reference in regards to while these are rare disorders, they are not that terribly uncommon. Mitochondrial disorders are genetic disorders, and by that I mean they alter our genetic blueprint, or the code that we receive through our families that dictates everything about us. These disorders result in decreased energy production in our body and body cells and subsequently result in localized or widespread problems. The analogy I often use is that of power outages or flickering of our lights in the summertime when energy demands are higher due to air conditioning. Sometimes a power outage can be widespread throughout an entire neighborhood, or it may only consist of some flickering of your lights. This is the type of problem that you can see in mitochondrial disorders. So again, they can be localized or widespread. To review basic biology, we all know that the smallest functioning unit of our bodies is the cell. Many cells together make up tissues, and many sheets of tissues together make up our organs. Inside of our body cells, in the cytoplasm, are a number of organelles, including the mitochondria. Again, the mitochondria are our body's batteries, and they're elongated rod-like structures. If we look closely at the mitochondria, we will see that they are composed of an outer membrane and an inner membrane. The infolding of the inner membrane forms cristae. Embedded within the inner membrane are the five complexes of the energy producing pathways. The energy producing pathways are known as the respiratory chain. You may also hear them referred to as the electron transport chain, and the process whereby energy is produced as oxidative phosphorylation. These terms are all interchangeable. The ultimate goal of this respiratory chain, which again consists of five complexes or groups of chemicals, is the production of ATP. ATP is a universal form of energy which is identified by the body as the go button. Essentially, it's an efficient and effective way for the body to function 
and I like to use the following analogy to explain that. If every day you went to go start your car, you had approximately 15 to 20 keys, and you did not know which one of them would start the car, it would take you a long time to get going. If the body didn't produce a chemical that it identified on all occasions as the go button, it would be very inefficient. So similar to the fact that you typically have one key that starts your car, making it an easy process, the body making one chemical that's the go button makes it far more efficient. Let's take a closer look at the respiratory chain. As I indicated, it is composed of five complexes or group of chemicals. This process, whereby energy is produced, requires oxygen and phosphate. Two chemical compounds known as NADH and FADH2, which are the breakdown products of food, dump their energy into the electron transport chain and ultimately make ATP using phosphate and oxygen. Again, the final energy packets are known as ATP. What type of problems occur in individuals who have mitochondrial disease? Well, there are five parts of the body in organ systems that are most energy dependent. And they are the brain, the central nervous system, the heart, the muscle, the kidney, and liver. Now that doesn't mean symptoms are contained to just those systems, but most often individuals who present with these disorders have problems in one or several of those body systems. Some of the problems that can affect the central nervous system include hearing and vision loss, developmental delays, loss of function, which is neurodegeneration, seizures, muscle weakness. Other neurological problems such as autism have been reported in these disorders. When the heart's affected, the typical problems noted are cardiomyopathy and rhythm abnormalities. Liver disease can be mild elevation of liver function test to blatant liver failure. There's a subtype of mitochondrial disorders 